that color? Uh, you know what, man? It's, it's kind of cool. I don't know if it's something I would buy immediately, but um, it does stand out. So it makes you look like you know what you're doing, right? It reminds me of... Uh, I, can, I, I don't know. What, what do they call that color? Because it looks like the Statue of Liberty. Color. Right, right. Kind so, of, uh, Inverness green. Inverness. <laughs> Inverness green. Just because okay. it ain't regular green. It's Inverness yeah. green. All right, so. Well, that's what made most of the Statue of Liberty must be. Inverness. Oh, okay. Interesting. I didn't know that. But Inverness Scotland. I'm, I'm, I'm just supposing. I don't know for okay. sure. All right, because I was going to. And that's why they made that in France. Um, hey, do me a favor, man. I'm sorry. Remind remind the audience out there. What's your name again? Chris Turner. Chris Turner. Yeah. So. You've been playing about as long as I have. About four thousand years. Four thousand years. <laughs> and I still don't know nothing. You so. still don't play, man. Come on. Man. <laughs> Automatically went to the Fender uh, uh, amp. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of the standard, you know, um, just the combination of two speakers. This works the most for me just to judge what I'm looking for in an amp. But um, I think the, the thing is, is that you got a bunch of different flavors out here. So, you know, as long as it covers a basic need, you know, mm -hmm. just a humbucker sound, I'm generally a pawn. Now, you a Les Paul man? You a Fender player at all? Uh, yeah, no. As a matter of fact, I, um, I, I'm, I'm a secret closet telly guy. Um, I love tellies. A closeted telly guy. Yeah, a closet telly guy. You don't want too many people to know that. Right? No, no. <laughs> then they're going to want me to play good like Roy Buchanan or something like that, or Albert Collins. And it's like, I can't do all that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. um, I think the main thing for me is that tellies just have this really great jangly sound that just uh, that just sounds so good with certain things particularly like when you're doing double stops and you know that that just, it's hard to be the telly for that you know it just I mean you can get away with it on Les Paul but you know a telly just has that honk to it that this sounds perfect now another secret I don't know you may not want people to know or not but you were telling me early on that uh, you used to watch Johnny Cash when you were younger. <laughs> oh, really? You gonna go there? Uh, I get all there. <laughs> so you know how to do that country thing. Just a little bit, man. Uh, oh, you, I, I say that because a lot of the brothers they stuck in the R&B vibe. You know yeah, what I'm you know. It's they don't cool. want to branch out. They, yeah, but you know, I just like to hear them cats like you know do like. Up with it. Oh, yeah. So, you know. It's the color. Man, you know what, dude? It's, it's, it makes you look like you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> Ever since I came in, I've been like, oh, man, no. Right, it just completely messed you all up. Yeah. Nah, Chris like, Thornburger. Yeah, yeah, the night. Chris Thornburger. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, you, talking uh, to Earl. You, 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 like that? You, you like that color? The Inverness Green is awesome. I do love that well, color. Well, I was asking him, man, the Inverness Green, now, is that Statue of Liberty Green? Or what? I don't know. Not I, quite, a little lighter. There was, I've seen this. This color before it, and sometimes it fades out to a lighter green later in its years. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. They do one that's like a forest green too. It's a little darker. But this is kind of the, the, the green version of Helen Blue, if you will. Also, Joe just sent it out to play a great. <laughs> I missed that last one up. Actually, um, not quite yet. That's one of the reasons I was looking at this one. Um, I've got like a, a couple of guitars that I'm using quite a bit, but every now and then it's kind of missed the Les Paul vibe. Uh, I, I, I've played a number of Heritage H150s, which are very similar, but um, not a lot of stores around here stock them. So, you know, between here and uh, Joe's music, I've spent a lot of time uh, just looking at those types of guitars the last few months anyway. Well, let me, let me get to the real deal. You know, I told you about my channel and how I mm -hmm. try to save people a little money here and there. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like uh, with, you know, me playing bass and uh, the American Fenders, and then you got the, uh, the Squires and the Mexican Fenders. I mean, you got here the top of the line Gibson. Good, man. Good. Sounding good, man. Thanks, I love bro. that guitar. It's fun. It's a lot. Yeah. Top of the line Gibson, man. And then you got, you know, their, their, their offshoots, the Epiphone. Yeah. Really, could you tell the people out there, is there that much of a difference? Nah, not really. I mean, you know, when I started playing 800 years ago, um, you know, when you bought an Asian-made instrument, um, you were, they were still on the early portion of the learning curve. 
So you wound up getting an inexpensive instrument that played like an inexpensive instrument. But now that they've got some 30 some odd years under their belt since that time, uh, they've really come a long way. And then when you add, you know, CAD CAM and CNC and all these other things where they can issue instrument after instrument with consistent quality, um, it, it really makes for a winning combination in terms of um, more bang for your buck. So, you know, I, I think about some Epiphones that I've played in recent years and I'm just really impressed by their, their build quality. Um, you know, does it have everything the same, does it have the exact same feel that a $3,000 Gibson has? Nah, but it's like 85% of the way there. And so. Something that certainly a, a novice or an intermediate player could, oh, yeah. could deal yeah. with more over. Yeah. And the difference can be bridged off in time with a little fret work and different pickups, which is, you know, another couple hundred bucks. Well, it looks like, uh, sounds like, man, you either one of them, you sound great on, man. So Thank you ain't got to worry about that, man. No, well, you know what, man? Bless your heart. There'll be something extra next week's paycheck, lady. So, <laughs> so. Well, I mean, you know, you know, you know, I just, uh, I just love talking to musicians, man. And see what, yeah, you know, same here. Because uh, this is becoming more and more of an art, more and more of a personal thing. Because, uh, you know, making large amounts of money, you know, the music business is becoming unheard of now. Mm. So you either love it or there's nothing, you know. If you just end it for the become a star, I mean, you're wasting your time now. Yeah, nobody becomes a musician by accident. No. Um, you know, um, it's one of those types of things where, you know, um, it's a war of attrition. you got to beat at it until you get out of it what you want, and then it's got to be for you, because if it's not, there's a million other cats in line ahead of you that thought they should have been the next Elvis, right? Oh, yeah, so. just like, just like uh, the novices on the basketball court. Yeah. You know, these yeah. guys go out there and play, man, some ball, you know, put Michael Jordan to shame. But of course, they'll always be on the basketball court. You know, saying, you know. No, no, no doubt. Somebody once told me that um, that the number of guys who actually make it to the pros is something like five percent of all of the people in high school basketball right now. And so, probably lesser with the music business. So, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, man. You know, if you are a working musician and you're actually drawing enough income on it to survive, you're lucky. Yeah, you're doing real well. Better than ninety percent of us. Well, dude, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you being on my channel here. And, uh, no problem. You know, uh, this guy, man, I, I saw this guy at another place. He followed me over here. So <laughs> I was like, what? He's here again? Yeah, I know, man. So, I know the know. whole restraining order thing is getting off. Oh, yeah, okay, you know, all right. right. <laughs> we, we ain't going to go there, man. Yeah, Different right, right, right. You know, well, I'm talking about against me. So that's oh, all no, right. please. <laughs> I don't believe that. Well, play me out, man. You, you sound real good. Thanks, brother. Can we take that part out? I, I don't have no editing, man. You, no, just keep playing, man. Yeah.